Speaker, and still I rise, and still I rise, a proud, liberated Democrat, unbought, unbossed, and unafraid. In the spirit of Shirley Chisholm, I rise, a great and noble American. Mr. Speaker, I rise today on another mission of mercy. I rise today because this morning at approximately 4.30 a.m., I was reviewing a news story. And in this news story, there was an indication that there was death in Haiti. I had an opportunity to see on the screen of my television the horrors that were emanating from the story. Mr. Speaker, I saw a person lying in the street, a person lying in the street who was apparently without life. It is not a pleasant thing to see someone without life. But to see a person lying in the street without life, with only a portion of the body uh, discernible, was quite an experience. But as I saw this person lying in the street, Mr. Speaker, I also saw persons passing by. Most of them were on vehicles of the two-wheel variety. And as they passed by, some of them looked, but others barely glanced. And among those passing by were young, old, but also there was a person who was with law enforcement who passed by, a body lying in the street. Someone was interviewed, and it was explained by the person interviewed that this person had been attacked had been attacked by people who were of the opinion that they were defending themselves. And they attacked this person with machetes, severed limbs from the body. At least that is the way it appeared to me as I viewed this on my screen, my TV screen. It was quite shocking and appalling to see this body lying in the street people just simply passing by. Haiti is a country in turmoil. And if you believe that injustice anywhere, as Dr. King put it, is a threat to justice everywhere, you have to be concerned about what's happening in Haiti. You have to be concerned. The statistical information related to the atrocities that are occurring can stir the soul, can, can literally cause persons to come to tears if you truly care about people. I'd like to share some of the information. And hopefully, those who believe that injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere will have some concern about the injustice that's taking place in Haiti. According to the UN, Special Re Representative for Haiti, more than 8,400 people were victims of gang violence in Haiti in the last year. The last year alone, more than 8,400 people victims of gang violence. Now, Haiti is a country with a population of a little more than 11 million, perhaps about 11 million 500,000. Haiti is a country that is closer to the United States than Texas is, than Houston, Texas is to El Paso, Texas. Haiti is just off of our shores. We ought to be concerned. Haiti last year, including killings, injuries, and kidnappings, had about a 122% increase over 2022. The UN Commission for High Human Rights, Volker Turk, warned that across Haiti last year, at least 3,600 people had been killed. 
1,432 injured, 2,951 kidnapped in gang-related violence, and this was as of November. The number of injuries in Haiti. According to the United Nations Quarterly Report on Human Rights situated in Haiti, lynchings, lynchings, something that causes me a good deal of concern with my history. Uh, my history is one that has suffered great lynchings. Lynchings have left at least 76 people dead across the country. At least 1,634 people were killed or injured as a result of violence by criminal groups. Gangs of people killing 1,634 people. At least 693 people were kidnapped in the last quarter of 2023, an increase of 18 percent over the previous quarter. At least 53 children, some as young as six months old, were kidnapped, killed, or injured during the last quarter of 2023. This ought to cause people who believe that injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere to have some concern. Almost 500 children had no time to escape from a school that they were trapped in and had to remain in that school for some two days. The health care situation in Haiti has greatly deteriorated. According to The Guardian, Haiti's health care system has all but collapsed amid the ferocious gang insurrection that's taking place. Hospitals have been set ablaze. Doctors have been murdered. And even basic medical supplies have dried up. Currently, only one public hospital in Haiti's capital, Port-au-Prince, remains operational, but is expected to shut its doors. Mr. Speaker, a summary of the food situation can bring one to ask how could we allow such circumstances to exist. According to NPR, since the COVID virus had its take, uh, take, took its toll, at least 4 million people in Haiti have been acutely food insecure. And now, out of those 4 million, 1 million are one step away from famine. According to the Washington Post, there were disturbances in January and food prices jumped 25 percent in the south where roadblocks came up and trucks weren't able to get to Port-au-Prince with basic necessities. Mr. Speaker, the World Food Program survey found that as prices go up, household incomes are going down because people can't go to work and are sheltering in place and aren't going to earn money. If we truly believe that injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere, we have to be concerned about the persons in Haiti because many of them will want to leave and seek safety elsewhere. Some of them will make an attempt to come to this country. Unfortunately, our country has a history of turning Haitians away. It wasn't that long ago that as the persons from Cuba were escaping Cuba and coming to this country, we had a policy that was styled, known as, called, if you will, wet foot, dry foot. This policy of wet foot, dry foot would allow a Cuban to get one foot on dry land in the United States of America and then move forward, move forward into the country, move forward on a pathway that would lead to jobs, that would lead to a better life, and possibly lead to citizenship in the country. Wet foot, dry foot was the name of the policy. It applied to Cubans. At the same time, Cubans were arriving in this country from, uh, from Castro's Cuba, as we have called it, uh, but as Cubans were arriving in this country, Haitians were arriving. Haitians were fleeing poverty and despair 
hunger, death. At the same time they were arriving, the Haitians could get both feet on dry land, could acquire a job, but if they were discovered, they were sent back to Haiti. One policy for persons coming from Cuba, known as wet foot, dry foot, that is the way the policy was styled. And another policy for persons coming from Haiti that would cause them to be returned to Haiti, back to despair, back to poverty, and some of them back to lives that are unthinkable as we envision life for human beings. We have not treated Haiti fairly when compared to how we've treated others within this hemisphere, a country that, again, is closer to the United States than Houston, Texas is to El Paso, Texas. Mr. Speaker, if we truly believe that injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere, we ought to release the some $40 million that are available to help Haiti. $40 million available that we could release if we would but only agree to let the money that has already been appropriated go to Haiti. $40 million available, not enough, but more than they would have and would be of help to some. $40 million. Two people out of 435 plus 100 in the Senate are holding up this money to, that could go to Haiti and help the Haitian people. If you truly believe that injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere, release the $40 million. Release the money to Haiti. There can be any number of reasons why you would hold the money, but in my opinion, what's happening in Haiti, as I have explained it, would justify releasing the money. Release the money so that Haiti can get some of the help that it needs. Voltaire reminded us that those who can make you believe absurdities can make you commit atrocities. It is an absurdity to believe that holding on to this $40 million is somehow going to benefit us and the people in Haiti. $40 million ought to be released. It is an absurdity to think that holding on to this $40 million is somehow going to improve conditions in Haiti. I don't believe anyone believes that. But I also would hope that no one believes that holding on to the $40 million is more important than helping those persons who are suffering in Haiti. We ought to release this $40 million. It is an absurdity to hold on to this money. And those who can cause you to believe absurdities can cause you to commit atrocities. So in truth, our fingerprints now, our fingerprints are on some of what is happening in Haiti because we could prevent some of what is happening in Haiti with the funds that have already been allocated, but because we refuse to send the $40 million, people are going to suffer. Not enough money is the $40 million, but it's more than they have, and it can alleviate some of the suffering that's taking place. So I rise on this mission of mercy with an appeal to the two people who but with their signatures could release $40 million to suffering people. Use that pen to make a difference. Take your hand, grab that pen, and release that $40 million to the Haitians who can benefit from it. I thank you for the time, Mr. Speaker. And I believe that injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. And we have a threat that is imminent and can unfortunately take its place across the, the Gulf and find its home here in this country. Injustice does not stay within the confines of any one border if it persists long enough. It's time for us to help the people in Haiti and release the $40 million. I yield back the balance of my time. The gentleman yields. Under the speaker's announced policy.